In this video, I'll discuss common methods to evaluate text classification models. I'll cover gold standards and contingency tables, as well as accuracy, precision, recall, and F-measure. Then I'll work through some case examples for computing precision, recall, and F1. Evaluation is a really important component of text classification because it's how you answer the key questions that you have about the model you're developing. It provides information about how well your model works, whether it is good by some kind of standard, and whether it is better than other models. However, before we can answer any of those questions, we need some sort of basis upon which to make our comparisons. For example, in this module, we've talked a lot about sarcasm detection. In order to determine whether our predicted label of sarcastic for the test sentence we've been working with is correct, we need to have a label from some sort of trusted source indicating that it is or is not sarcastic. We usually call these trusted labels the gold standard or true values. We can acquire our gold standard from a variety of sources, and which sources are reliable will depend on the task. If you need labeled data for a specific subject area, for example, you're rating English to Polish translation quality, then you will want to recruit experts in that specific subject area. Otherwise, you can't be assured that your gold standard is reliable. Uh, for example, asking me to rate English to Polish translation quality would not be a good idea because I'd have no idea what I was doing. For simpler tasks or tasks that most people would be expected to be able to complete easily, like deciding whether one event takes place before another in a sentence, you can usually get away with recruiting non-experts. Non-experts might be your friends or family, or they might be crowd workers from websites like Amazon Mechanical Turk. And once we have our gold standard labels, we can actually begin to evaluate our classification model. Evaluating classification performance basically boils down to comparing predicted and actual or gold standard labels. We usually do this using metrics based on contingency tables, also referred to as confusion matrices. In a contingency table, there are rows, which usually correspond to the predicted values, and columns, which usually correspond to the actual values. The number of rows and columns depends on the number of classes you're considering. In this video, we'll be assuming that we're doing binary classification, so we'll have two rows and two columns for classes A and B. The four quadrants of our confusion matrix will then correspond to true positives, which are instances that were predicted to belong to the true class and that actually are in that class, false positives, which are instances that were predicted to belong to the true class but actually aren't in that class, true negatives, which are instances that were predicted to belong to the false class and actually are in that class, and then false negatives, which are instances that were predicted to belong to the false class but are actually true. So then using our two by two contingency tables, we can compute precision, recall, F measure, and accuracy using simple formulas. For accuracy, we're computing the percentage of all observations that the system labels correctly. So the correct quadrants of our matrix are the true positives and the true negatives. We'll sum those and then divide them by the sum of all four quadrants. Accuracy is a fine metric, but it has some shortcomings that make it not very suitable for some tasks. For example, it does a bad job of describing performance when you have an unbalanced data set. If you have a data set with, say, 999,900 non-sarcastic sentences and 100 sarcastic sentences, your classifier could just sort of shrug and be like, I'm going to say everything is non-sarcastic. And in doing that, it would achieve 99.99% accuracy. However, it still wouldn't be a useful classifier because it would never actually tell you when an instance was sarcastic. A lot of scenarios, in fact, have goals of accurately discovering instances from less frequent classes. For example, medical issues are generally uncommon, but you want to be able to find them when they exist. 
Likewise, papers about very specific topics are pretty infrequent, and spam email is thankfully slightly less common than non-spam, at least in my inbox. For those scenarios, better alternatives are precision, recall, and F measure. Precision answers the question of the instances that are predicted to be positive, what percentage of them actually are. To do that, you just take the number of true positives and divide it by the sum of the true and false positives. That's everything that was predicted to be positive regardless of the actual label. Recall answers the question of the instances that actually are positive, what percentage did the system predict to be? So it's basically looking at the ratio of the actually positive instances that were captured by taking the number of true positives divided by the sum of true positives and false negatives. So both of these metrics emphasize a specific class that you're interested in. For example, if you're building a sarcasm detection model, you might be more interested in the case where the sarcastic class is the positive class. We can see that if we take our problematic example from a few slides ago and compute precision and recall for the sarcastic class, we get values of zero since nothing was actually predicted to be sarcastic. This gives us a much better idea of how performance is with respect to our needs than accuracy does. In terms of what's more useful between precision and recall, that really depends on the task. If it's more important that the things you say are positive really are, at the expense of predicting that some actual positives are negative, then you should focus on precision. However, if the reverse is true and it's more important that you capture all possible actual positives at the expense of predicting some actual negatives to be positive, then you should focus on recall. If both are important, that's where F measure comes in. F measure is the weighted harmonic mean between precision and recall. It takes a parameter beta that decides which of precision and recall is more important. If beta is greater than one, recall is more important. If beta is less than one, precision is more important. And if beta equals one, they're equally important. It's most common to set beta to one in natural language processing tasks, since usually both precision and recall are important. In this case, the F measure is usually referred to as the F1 measure or just F1. When you insert a beta value of one into the F measure equation, you get the sum of one squared plus one times precision times recall, all divided by one squared times precision plus recall. This simplifies to just the product of two times precision times recall divided by the sum of precision and recall. Even though precision and recall are weighted equally in F1, the measure is a bit conservative, so whichever of the two numbers is lower will factor a bit more heavily into the final score. And we can go ahead and work through some examples for computing precision, recall, and F1 to see the process in action. So here we have a small labeled sarcasm detection corpus. We also have a sarcasm detection model that we built, maybe using naive Bayes, and we'll use it to go ahead and predict labels for all of these instances. So we see that some of the predictions are correct and others aren't. We want to evaluate our set of predictions using precision, recall, and F1. So the first thing we need to do is create our confusion matrix. We need to count the numbers of true positives, false positives, false negatives, and true negatives. We set our positive class to sarcastic. We see that there's just one true positive among our predictions, where both the predicted and actual labels are sarcastic. There's also only one false positive. So in general, our classifier seems to have sort of underpredicted the sarcastic class. There are three false negatives, so three cases where the model predicted that the instance was not sarcastic, but it actually was sarcastic. And finally, there are two true negatives, or cases where both the predicted and actual labels were not sarcastic. 
So now that we have our filled out confusion matrix, we can go ahead and start computing our metrics. We'll do precision first. So remember that we just need to divide the true positives by the sum of true positives and false positives, giving us a precision of 0 0.5. And next we'll do recall. So we divide the number of true positives by the sum of true positives and false negatives, giving us a recall of 0 0.25. Now that we have our precision and recall, we can compute F1. For the numerator, we'll compute 2 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.25. And for the denominator, we'll compute 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25. This gives us an F1 of 0 0.333. So not the greatest sarcasm detector in the world, but that just means we have lots of room to improve. Let's say that now all of a sudden we want to check what our performance is like if not sarcastic is the positive class instead. We'll need to go ahead and fill out our confusion matrix again based on this new truth. So now we have two true positives, three false positives, one false negative, and one true negative. With this new confusion matrix, our precision is 2 divided by 5, or 0 0.4. Our recall is 2 divided by 3, or 0 0.667. These new precision and recall values mean that our new F1 has a numerator of 2 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.667 and a denominator of 0 0.4 or plus 0 0.667. This actually ends up resulting in an F1 of just ever so slightly above 0 0.5. So still not great, but our model is functioning a bit better as a non-sarcasm detector than it is as a sarcasm detector. Overall, in this video, we covered some really useful evaluation methods that you'll see over and over in text classification problems. Accuracy measures overall performance, whereas precision, recall, and F1 allow you to measure performance for a specific class.